So, I love this part. We're joined by attendees from more than 125 countries around the world. And I'm going to call out a few countries, kind of louder party type cultures. And I, I kind of want to hear you. There might be many of you, but you always make a lot of noise. Anybody here from Mexico? Anybody here from Brazil? And then the loudest country on earth. Anybody here from the USA? There's a lot of people. So the next, the next three days and four nights are all about networking, meeting each other. And you just never know, even right now, who's sitting beside you. We've got some incredible people dotted across the crowd. So we have a little tradition at Collision, and we're going to implement it in a few moments. I'm going to ask everybody to stand up that's been sitting, seated for quite some time. And I want you to turn, all of you, to three people and just introduce yourself. And then we'll sit down again and just see who you meet. Let's go for it, everybody. Here we go. Let's stand up. Where are you from? Getting, getting everybody to stop. Wasn't that fantastic? That was great. That really, that was amazing. Something else that's particularly amazing in my mind is Toronto. At a time when other places in the world are becoming more closed. Toronto remains an incredibly welcoming and cosmopolitan city, and we're incredibly grateful to be here. I think this is important. Over the last hour, we heard from a lot of Canada's most exciting entrepreneurs and startups who are pitching on this stage. For almost all of them, it was their very first time ever pitching to an audience of this size, and I'd love you to show a huge collective round of a show of appreciation for them. So before I introduce Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, I want to tell you the short story of how Collision came to Canada. A little over five years ago, a former Canadian diplomat turned venture capitalist who you saw on stage earlier, Sunil Sharma, called me. He told me that Toronto was the next big thing. It was going to be the future tech capital of the world, and we had to do collision in Toronto, and we were silly to do it at the very start in Las Vegas. I remember at the time calling friends in San Francisco, most of them, just asking them what they thought of this idea. Should, should, should we do a tech conference in Canada? Uh, and at the, at the time, they just completely dismissed the, uh, the notion. They thought it was, it was silly. But Sunil is proficient at pestering. And for years, he kept telling me that Toronto was the perfect city. There were emails, there were coffees, there were texts. And for years, I ignored Sunil. And then finally, two years ago, I just agreed to save my inbox that I would at least just fly to Toronto exactly two years ago uh, this week. And I remember driving in from Pearson uh, International Airport, which many of you have done, and just looking out of Sunil's car window, and it had never dawned to me just how big Toronto actually was. I was, I was blown away, and I think it's the, you know, Canadians are notorious, if that's the right word, around the world for their humility and generally just being very soft-spoken. Uh, but the, under, the kind of underbelly of that is that oftentimes I think Canada short sells itself on the world stage. Certainly in the case of Toronto, I was, I was sure in my mind, having met a lot of Texans, that the likes of Dallas and Houston were far more important global cities. But that wasn't the case at all. Toronto... <laughs> So, 
over the next 24 hours with Sunil, I met so many incredible startups that I really had never imagined would exist in Toronto. And I also met an incredible mayor, John Tory, who is not just passionate about his city and the Raptors, I should add, but about growing the role of entrepreneurship and startups within Toronto itself. And I, it was really from that kind of moment on that I knew something that I think a lot of people around the world, uh, in my belief, still perhaps to this day hadn't realized, and that's that Toronto had firmly arrived on the world's tech scene. And so one year ago, when we announced we were moving Collision out of the United States entirely and making Toronto our new home, a lot of good people were shocked. There were tweets, there were emails, there were all sorts of stuff from friends in Silicon Valley who, who I genuinely trust, just saying things like, it'll never work, people will never fly there, if you still have time to change, you should rethink, it should be San Francisco. But guess what? Sunil, as annoying as he was, was right all along. And I'd like to thank him a huge amount for bringing us here. Over the last week, a, a lot of people had assured us that opening night would be very subdued. You really wouldn't get much of a show up at all because it was a public holiday uh, and people just wouldn't, wouldn't show up. And I think they also kind of misread the sentiment uh, in this city and in this country. The appetite for tech and for startups uh, is huge. And I hope the nearly 1,000 journalists flying in from around the world write that into uh, the many stories that they'll be printing coming out uh, of this event. That's my son, Cloud, if anybody just... Uh, just. Um, so there are more than 70 trade delegations from around the world with us tonight because of the work of the Canadian government, and in particular the work of Canada's rather excellent Chief Trade Commissioner, Ailish Campbell, and her team, who deserve a huge, huge round of applause. Now, we're excited to kick off the evening, and who better to begin than Canada's Prime Minister? Since taking office in 2015, he's been at the forefront of a revolution in Canadian tech. The Prime Minister, in my view, as a European, has helped put Canada firmly on the global tech map. We're excited to have him at the very first collision in Canada. So please welcome to the stage, in conversation with Broadband TV's founder, the incredible Sharzad Rafati, our first speaker, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Woo!